The Beatles' perceptions of their past through interviews changed considerably depending on the period each one was going through. And the closer the interview was to the breakup of the Beatles, the harsher and more critical the comments were towards their work with the band. Unlike Ringo, who didn't get into much trouble, or John, who could be too harsh with his comments, or Paul, who almost always tried to speak well of the band, Harrison had a very particular humor and way of being when it came to commenting on almost anything related to the Beatles. Little did he talk about songs he didn't like, but we tried to compile a few for this video. We start with a song which not only Harrison hated, John Lennon and even Ringo, who was not used to badmouthing his mate's songs, spoke out against it. All three were against recording it, and it was Paul's insistence that made it have place on the Abbey Road track list. Sometimes Paul would make us do these really fruity songs, Harrison once said. I mean, my God, Maxwell's Silver Hammer was so fruity. After a while, we did a good job on it, but when Paul got an idea or an arrangement in his head, George and Ringo hated a song in which they were treated as session musicians, and Lennon refused to participate in the recording, calling it granny music. McCartney had his bandmates record, and re-record, Maxwell's Silver Hammer for days on end. She tells Max to stay when the class has gone away, and he stays behind, writing thousand lines and then da -da -da -da. And perhaps that took away from other great songs like All Things Must Pass and My Sweet Lord, perhaps, with more time and enthusiasm, could have been part of Abbey Road. Bang, bang, Maxwell, silver hammer, down upon his head. Clang, clang, Maxwell, silver hammer, make sure that John was dead. Another song that falls into the same category as the previous one, a track that was recorded so many times it made his bandmates hate it. McCartney's attempt at reggae fueled the fatigue the band had during the White Album period. After dozens of takes on the song, trying different rhythms and styles, a stoned Lennon immediately went to the piano and played the opening chords much louder and faster than he had before. He said this was the way the song should be played and changed the direction of the song to the one we know today. When Paul wanted to release it as a Beatles single because of its commercial viability, John, George and Ringo objected. This song, composed by Lennon and McCartney, but mainly by Lennon, was given to George Harrison for the album Please Please Me, as an exercise to give him confidence as a singer. John himself said that he was not so good in those days. He improved over the years, he said later. And that's why it was important that slowly, with not so complex songs, he started to sing more for the band. The song was labeled as innocent, as well as George's interpretation of the song. He was not very fond of the song, and years later he complained about the song saying, nobody ever told me how to sing it. It was clear to George Harrison from 1963 that he was outside the band's songwriting team of John and Paul, and in his own words, he had to push his way into the albums and their egos. His first formal effort as a songwriter was on Don't Bother Me. Harrison wrote it while sick in bed in a hotel room during the summer of 1963. Harrison never held the song in high regard, and while he didn't hate it, he wasn't very proud of it, stating on one occasion, it wasn't a very good song. I came to forget it completely once it was on the album. A song that in its lyrics could refer to Harrison's frustration in his often marginalized jobs within the band ended up frustrating him even more when it was rejected to be part of the White Album track list. By the time of its recording, relations within the group were increasingly strained, the band members often working alone and unable to help each other. For Lennon and McCartney, this was a minor problem, but Harrison needed the band's support for his songs. The Beatles recorded over a hundred takes of Not Guilty, but even the best one of those failed to earn a place on the White Album. It's amazing that a song that took so many hours of work didn't convince John and Paul to include it on the album. Harrison, annoyed, pushed the song aside and it ended up being a bitter memory for him, who finally recorded it in 1979 for his George Harrison album in a much soft version. Mm -hmm. 
a song that has been on everyone's mind for the last few months and that in a short time will be officially released. Now and Then was one of the unfinished songs that John Lennon recorded as demos in 1979 and that were given by Yoko Ono to the Beatles to work on in the 90s for their anthology project. This song was to headline Volume 3 of the compilation. Free as a Bird was released on Volume 1, and Real Love was released on Volume 2. Arguing a background noise that they could not remove, the song was dropped at the last minute, and a beginning composed by George Martin replaced it. Although the technology was an obstacle at the time, the real reason the song was not released was Harrison's disinterest. According to McCartney's own words, George Harrison didn't want to do it. It had a very good title, but it needed a bit of work. It had nice verses, and you could hear John's voice singing it, but George didn't want to do it. He said in an interview. We started working on, but George went off it. <sighs> fucking hell. Fucking rubbish, this is. It was like, no, George, this is John. It's still fucking rubbish, you know. Oh, okay, then. <laughs> Already as an extra of the video, although it is not a concrete song but an album itself, George Harrison disliked Sgt. Pepper's. His participation was minimal. They discarded his proposals, and the only song of his on the album, Within You, Without You, was not to the total liking of the band. Even George Martin was against including it on the album. Harrison was not writing Beatles material at the time. He was trying to master the sitar and neglected the guitar. He was also on a spiritual journey. Every time he was reminded of the acclaimed Beatles album, Harrison showed his total disinterest. Well, he also once said he didn't like Abbey Road very much. And what little is known is because George was difficult to talk to. He just wanted to be left alone. That's all for now. Remember that you have the best opinion. Tell us below what you think about it. Subscribe to our channel and like us. Thanks for watching. This is Music Box. When uh, the Beatles were at their peak of popularity, the, uh, <clears throat> How did your fellow uh, compatriots... We had great fun and then we had great pain and misery together and we had a lot of problems. As everybody knows, we went up and down and round and round. And at this stage of my life, I can look back on it and really remember the good things about it.